Well, I think, I think being a missionary is really a calling. I don't think it's something that you would want to get involved in unless you're really uh, willing to give it your all. But on the other hand, there's a lot of people who maybe they, they don't have that calling, but they still feel like they want to do something to help. And in that case, I think that there's always something that people can do to help, whether it's giving financially, whether it's volunteering their time, or helping with, with uh, some sort of project that involves their skill, giving their expertise. I kind of, I kind of just do this by dead reckoning. I, I, I mean, I've been here enough now that I know my way around. But still, every time I do, I have to really, I have to focus and make sure I don't get lost because there's so many little tiny, little tiny roads that go every which way. Mm hmm. Look at that restocking of sorry, sorry stores. Well, I would say that the Philippines is a, a missionary's haven because there's plenty of work to do here. We'll never run out of work. There's always needy people everywhere, in the city, out of the city. Uh, there's poor people, both spiritually and physically, that need God's help and God's love. Children, adults, women, men, everybody, really. And um, we love the Philippines very much. We're still here for a long time, and we hope that uh, God will allow us to stay here longer uh, so that we can continue because we truly love this country, yeah. I advertised on, on Facebook and several architects responded and all sorts of people. We had a, a whole other firm of engineers do all of the blueprints for it. And then once, once that was all finished and finalized, we had to start looking for, for contractors. So uh, the architect had worked with several firms and saw the site, and most of them because of the, the whereabouts and because of the difficulties and because they also knew that I was a, a missionary and had, was working on a, on a donation budget, weren't interested. But one company was, and they seemed very interested. And uh, so he seemed nice, and he continued to uh, offer a discount. So by the new year, uh, when I had really been able to fundraise for it, I had gotten about 900,000 pesos, which wasn't, still wasn't enough. And I told him at the time, I really don't have that. I've got what I've raised, and I'm, I for sure will raise the rest, God willing. Three weeks later, the construction actually started. It seemed to be going okay for the first three weeks to a month. But the progress was just so slow that I started to become worried. Uh, one engineer visited and said, if you increase the level of manpower to at least 10 and stop having all these delays with materials, you might be able to finish it in three months. So I've been working on that for the last couple of weeks, and we just had our visit today. Uh, at which time we found out that they're back hard at work again. So it's an ongoing saga, and I guess we'll see what, what the outcome is. One way or the other, we're going to get it done. <laughs> Talagang sincere siya na tumulong. Yun yung nakita ko kasi nung unang ano niya nun sa amin, naalala ko yung nagkaroon kami ng feeding program sa covered court. Feeding program, then medical. Nakitaan ko si sir na matulungan kami dito sa barangay South Dahal. 
kung ano man yung binibigay sa amin ni Sir Simon ay pangalagaan namin, lalong-lalo na pagdating talaga na magkaroon ka ng concern sa community mo ng kalinisan. Kahit na, na, nandito sa isang ganitong area, makitaan kami na malinis yung area namin, nagtutulungan yung community para sa kalinisan at kaayusan ng lupa. Take a hat. There's only so many that are colored. Okay. But there's also some nice... Look at these designs. These are pretty cool too, right? All right. Uh, you guys know better. Before we officially begin, we can stop, we can pray together, and then we can have a little talk about what we want to accomplish this morning, yeah? Amen, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for um, good weather, that you stop the rain so that we can all stay dry. I also thank you for the clouds so that it's not too hot. Thank you, Jesus, for each one who has volunteered their time on this Sunday to work hard to clean up this area. I pray that this will be a fun and inspirational activity and that it will not stop with today, but that we will be able to make uh, this Baroque the cleanest in the whole barangay. Sobrang sincere siya, tapos sobrang dedicated siya. As in, kahit wala siya, kahit, kahit sobrang busy niya, basta humiik ka ng tulong sa kanya, tutulong siya. We do our Bible study every Wednesday. Naging optimistic ako, naging prayerful, so mas hopeful ako sa lahat ng bagay. Pag naiisip ko yung mga tuturo ni Pastor, or yung mga reminders niya sa amin, so yun, parang nakagaan din ng loob. We only have one day off. So yung one day off namin, parang imbes na ipahinga namin, tumutulong kami sa kanya. So parang hindi na sayang yung off na. Kahit pagod na kami sa work, basta nakatulong kami sa kanya, okay lang. Kasi nakita rin namin yung hard work niya. Siya yung nagbubuhat ng ganito, ganyan, tapos makita mo talaga all sweat siya. Mabait mab si Pastor, saka simple lang siya. So parang, I look up to him din. Parang inspiration din siya. Uh, maganda din po na, uh, nakakatulong. na nakakatulong ka. At minsan maglaan ka din ng oras para sa ibang tao. Kinikwento niya sa amin, pabalik-balik daw siya ng... Sa ibang-ibang lugar para bilhin lang yung mga stuff para sa outreach. I think ganun siya kasipag. He is a godsend talaga na para makatulong. At actually, yung family niya, lahat sila, pati yung wife niya, yung mga children niya, talagang yung unity nila para makatulong. My parents used to be missionaries. It was interesting. We got to work with a lot of people, help a lot of people here in the Philippines and in Africa so I think it's it's a good experience and I like coming to these charity things with my friends. <laughs> we are full-time volunteers and we are living by faith. We are not supported by a big church. We're uh, independent missionaries so therefore we have to um, find all of our supporters ourselves by going out and reaching out to people, uh, finding people both in business community or different uh, individuals that would like to sponsor and help our, our mission and our projects. We find our own projects and get others to, uh, that are interested to sponsor and I think that's been our greatest challenge. S-Tech that is donating all of the chairs, tables, and some other equipment for our daycare center. Our company, we've been helping several institutions for several years, several years now. We are always happy to help and we saw that the advocacy of this organization is very good. It's actually aligned to our mission. mission. Uh, 100 armchairs, 100 stacking uh, school chairs, and I think it's 16 tables and chairs. They actually went to our office in the city government and they actually give books and uh, other school supplies to the children of Southville and Bully and Bupa. We have story time, so we will talk about it. It's part of the storytelling. We have a lot of stories and stories that we have given to our friends. We have a lot of 
planning to have an outreach program, Bible studies for kids, and we do not have materials. So this is very timely and very helpful. But you also have all those other materials, right? Yes. Those are super yes. good. Yeah. I've been using that already. Fantastic. I'm so happy to hear that. I don't believe that religion is really what makes a difference. But yes. if people have a personal connection with God, religion. right, through through Jesus, then you can be a wonderful person because of Jesus, right? Well, my, like my dad says, it has to be a calling. So I'll, if, if I get older and God calls me to be a missionary, then I'll be a missionary if I really have it in my heart that I want to be. But it depends. Like she said, whenever there's projects or people invite us places, I obviously want to go because it's fun. They said, you don't choose to be a missionary unless it's really, 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 really something that you want to do because otherwise it's not going to really work hard. I think in the end, there's so many ways you can help people. They're doing one of the ways, which is one of the hardest, but there's so many other ways that you can help people. And that's in the end, you just have to choose the that's way that, we that works do. the best for you to help. Whenever we go, they, we go out together as a family and they've grown up with this. So it's part of their life and they look at it as a, a time to go out and help others. And it's fun. Um, I guess our motto is, where God guides, He provides. I guess once people see what we do, uh, there's no trust issues because we actually are very involved in uh, charity projects and activities and we're always on the go, always doing something, always looking for opportunities to help and we go directly to the people in need and help them out ourselves. There's been several times when I thought, I think maybe it's time to uh, call it quits and uh, go uh, to a more easy country, like for example, uh, Canada. It's kind of like a love-hate relationship. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> to leave would be, I think, just as hard as staying here, because yeah. everybody says it's so unnecessarily difficult here, which is true. But there's just some moments that when you think about it, you're like, it's it would be boring in any other place. But every time that I think about that, I think, what am I gonna do back in Canada? I just cannot imagine my life uh, being that I've been a missionary ever since I was a little girl because my parents were missionaries. I don't think I could cope living in Canada doing nothing with my life. Um, I, I wouldn't be happy. If it's God's will, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. There's going to always be hurdles and problems because that's part of life. But nonetheless, in, through prayer and faith, we can overcome. And yeah, when, when we go abroad and we talk to somebody else who's never stayed been to Asia, they always think that it's really, that we're interesting. Like, that's, that's the good thing. You always have stories to tell. Like people in Europe, they would never be able to even imagine. No matter how much I try to explain to them, they can't imagine what it's like here. Our happiness is really in helping others. That's, that's how we grew up and that's, this is what we love to do. I would say this is our dream job. It is for us. It's our dream job. So doing anything else would really, uh, I think, be depressing. But one way or the other, if you're focused on a solution, you can usually always figure something out. So yeah. And you know, there's always God too. You can always pray for something amazing to happen. Like, uh, yeah, and God always works something out. Mm -hmm.